Hi there, welcome to our series called Conversations. My name is Scott Brennan. I'm here with Ray Simpson. Hi, Ray. Hi, everyone. Hi, Scott. We are here in the prayer room in Starbank Cottage on Holy Island. And Ray and I are beginning a series of conversations around new monasticism and a way of life and what that might look like in practice. So today we're going to talk about a way of life, Ray, aren't we? Yes. Um, I wonder, it might be worthwhile for our viewers to get an explanation from you. When, when I use the phrase a way of life, what, what does that actually mean? Well, before we come onto a way or a rule of life, can we just think about way? Sure. There are 7 billion people in the world while we're recording this, who are basically very self-centred. And even religious people bring their self-centredness into their religion. Right. And it's why we have wars, injustice, poverty, planetary, climate crisis and so on. And a lot of religion has been subverted by colonial attitudes and um, self-advancement in the name of our religion. And so in order... To answer that, we have to find a way. Now, I believe that the idea of a way is imprinted by the divine into the uh, all the people of the world. For example, in China, Lao Tzu, Lao Tzu Tzu talked about Tao, which is basically that in the DNA of everything in the universe, there is a desire for love and harmony and our well-being resides in getting in tune with that in the way things are. The Buddha thought that we have to be have, have a way which is based on detachment from material possessions. Islam has five pillars, they're not stationary pillars, they're a way of life and in Christianity we actually had the claim that uh, the divinity incarnate in Jesus was the way, lived the way. Yeah, he said, I am the way. He said, I am the way. Yeah. And I yeah. am means Yahweh. I am the way. And then the, his followers were called followers of the way. Yes, yes. So uh, the whole world is crying out for a cure to self-centeredness. And that's what a way is. Oh, wow. Wonderful. Yeah, and, and sometimes that... Um, expression of uh, a rule is used but you prefer to talk about a way rather than a rule don't you well rule has its point because it's about the latin word for rule is regular from that you get uh, the idea of measurement when right. i was training for um, a long distance road race uh, i was running on linda's father and i thought i was doing frightfully well until i drove my car up the same distance and measured it and i realized that i was not measuring accurately <laughs> and I realised I was doing badly so I think measuring ourselves is quite important it's it's like becoming realistic and right. another word coming out of the Latin word regular is trellis yes, yes and you like that word don't you yeah yeah trellis for me it it, it gives the idea of structure and boundaries that allow organic growth, the right. idea of seeds in the ground. It's sort of like John 15, you know, that abiding and fruitfulness yeah. thing. So I, I like that idea. It's, I'm not particularly a gardener, but I can understand it. So we take from the monasteries the idea of rural life. We call it a way of life. Um, somebody called it um, a curriculum for Christ-likeness. Yes, I like that. And Do you uh, mean like a, almost like an education or athletic training or something like that? Yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Okay, well, that's great. So, so that's what a way of life is. But how might you decide what that looks like, or how how you know how do you know what a way is? I suppose the the example of Jesus, we're trying to follow his example, but there must be practical ways as yes. well. Well, we identify the values and the practices by which we want to live, right? And the accountabilities we want to build into our life, right? Okay. Now, with the um, community of Aden and Hilda way of life and many, many new monastic ways of life, it's not as in the monasteries where you, you have your timetable made up for you. You have to be responsible for your timetable, your rhythms, your spiritual practices. 
um, but you, you need a soul friend or a spiritual director to be accountable to. But one of the fundamental spiritual practices is self-examination. Right, okay. Uh, often that goes along for some who, if they're able to write, to write it down in a journal or dic put a dictaphone, record your thoughts. But um, I think that finding a regular rhythm for prayer, for rest, for recreation, but also deciding what you will remove from your life because mm -hmm. most mm -hmm. Christian workers are over busy. Yes, they're overworked. Because they can't say no. Yes. And that's because of yes. a problem with a fragile ego. Right, okay. Yeah. And so if you have the trellis in place, then that gives you the option to say this is this is out with what I should be doing. Yeah. It kind of keeps you on track, doesn't That's it? That's right. Obviously there are emergencies, but you can come back to your track. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so those really are I suppose I would call them guiding principles. Guiding principles, um, yes. Now the the community of Aidan and Hilda has ten what they call waymarks, don't they? Yes. Now we in this series we're going to cover each of these waymarks, but what's some of the thinking behind that? Well it starts with the three values of Simplicity, purity, and obedience. Yeah, which we'll cover in another which video. Which we'll cover in another video. Yeah. But then, then it goes on to waymarks. Well, if we picture our life as a journey, um, it's not just a kind of aimless, nowhere journey. We're we're moving for to be in God's will at God's time, in our skin, in our. Context. context yes yes so that's why each one of us yes. has to make a personal application yes so it's tailored it, we well we have the general way of life as a community but then we apply it in our own individual way wow but we we need to be accountable that's why we meet with a soul friend and um it's important if we're able to write that we write it down okay and so so you've used this word soul friend yeah um it might be good and helpful at this point to maybe define what do you mean by a soul friend. It's, in my mind, it's someone who journeys alongside you. Maybe you could tell us some more about that. Ideally, a soul friend is somebody who has been trained in spiritual direction and understands uh, different personality types and the tricks of human nature and um, is practised in setting aside over busyness and... Um, an, in, an inability to listen deeply to other yes, people, that yes. sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you've got to work at your your deadly sins, <laughs> your seven deadly sins. You've got to work at them. And you know, in my experience of soul friendship, I I practice something which I call double listening, which is you're listening to the person talking, but you're also trying to listen to what yes. the spirit is saying yes. and seeing where there's a synergy between those two yes. things. So one of the first things I think in a way of life or rule of life you need to be clear about is times of prayer. Mm. We we say it needs to reflect the rhythms of the sun, right, as Muslims okay. do. But we are not legalistic about it. We, we, we say, well, start the day like the sun rising mm -hmm. with a time of prayer and pause in the middle of the day before you're taken over mm -hmm. by too much business. And as the sun sets in the east kind of settle down with God before you sleep. Right, okay. That's the basic rhythm of prayer. And people work it out in different ways. Different and forms. so that, that kind of leads me on to some of the practical stuff then. So we, we've talked about what is a way um, and some of the principles of a way. Yes. But, but so what about some of the practices of, you know, obviously you've begun to speak about rhythms of life, but people are at different stages, aren't they? They are. So what, what, what are some of the practical things we might do? Well, I write down what is disturbing my peace. Ah, yeah, that's good. And that's an important thing. Yeah. And then I um, try and identify what things I'm doing because I can't stop doing them. Right. Because of my, my human nature, my unredeemed drives are taking over. Uh -huh. Maybe I'm frightened of failing or I'm frightened of what other people think of me. So I'm a kind of slave, really. Right. But I don't want to admit yes. it, but I am yes. a slave. So you're driven by certain things. Yeah. How do I become free? Yeah. Also, balance. You know, so it's important to keep fit in body, mind and spirit. Yeah, yeah. 
and to have um, changes from routine if we can build those right in. right yeah yeah wonderful so some people might build in a uh, if they're very very busy people pre-retired and all that they build in a day <laughs> off <laughs> yeah so things like sabbath yeah so, so we'll come back to some of these practices in the series and we'll have a look at the waymarks within this series and we'll unpack all of that. But Ray, I think that's, that's a great start. Thank you for explaining that. Um, please subscribe to the, the YouTube pages, which are both on Ray and my YouTube channel, and you'll be able to keep up to date with all the things that we're doing. So thanks for joining us. Thank thanks you, so Ray. Thanks very much. See you again. Bye now. Bye.